This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new video. It's been quite some time since I filmed anything and that's mainly because, as you can probably tell by the change in scenery behind me, um, we've moved. Unfortunately this isn't our forever home, we still haven't managed to find one yet, um, but in the meantime we're staying with my parents so um, we're really grateful for that. Thanks mom and dad. <laughs> but yeah, this is the bedroom that I grew up in as a kid, although it's changed quite a bit since I lived here probably about 10 years ago. But anyway, I'm back. I'm ready to film some content for you guys. It's September now, it's Virgo season, it's my birthday month, and I'm not actually usually someone who likes to do a lot to celebrate my birthday. I'm normally happy with just like a nice meal and a bottle of wine. <laughs> um, but this year I've just been feeling a little bit stale and I did want to do something kind of fun to celebrate. And I thought what better way to do that than make myself a completely over the top birthday dress. So as you can probably tell by the thumbnail or the title of this video, the dress that I'm going to be making is going to be based on Villanelle's pink dress in the show Killing Eve. So I've watched all the current seasons of the show and I really loved it um, and I really loved the style and this dress in particular, it's just so iconic. The scene in which she wears it is so good and I've seen a few people on YouTube um, do their own kind of versions of this dress as well and I got really inspired and so I wanted to try it for myself. So I'm looking forward to looking like a fashionable assassin for my birthday and I also think that this would actually make a really great Halloween costume as well. Um, for the fabric I picked up this silk organza from Blackbird Fabrics. Um, the color is magenta and as you can see it's quite a bit darker um, than both Villanelle's dress and actually what I expected based on um, what I saw online. Um, but I think it's okay, especially if it's just going to be one layer. Um, it'll be a bit sheer, um, and I do like the richness of this color. And I think overall I'm not really trying to make a perfect recreation of the dress, I'm more just making something that's kind of inspired by the dress as a whole. So I think this will be fine. And as for the pattern, um, I found a pattern for a dress from, I think, a French company, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. Um, my best guess is Ikiti. I think. Um, they do patterns for like women and children. Um, so I found this dress which I'll pop up here on the screen somewhere and I'll also have everything linked down below in case you're interested. And the reason why I chose this pattern is because I think it has the proper kind of bodice um, shape that I'm looking for, although I will have to hack it a little bit in order to get it kind of to where I want it to go. But yeah, I'm just not super comfortable with drafting my own patterns um, absolutely from scratch just yet, so it's always easier for me to have something kind of to base it on and to work from and then take it from there and kind of make adjustments as I go. Before we get started, I did want to quickly thank our sponsor for today's video, which is Skillshare. So if you don't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community where creative and curious people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes on topics including illustration, design, photography, and even sewing, Skillshare makes it so easy to try a new skill, exercise your creative juices, test out a new hobby that you've been curious about, and expand your horizons. So one of the classes that I took recently on Skillshare was Self-Care with Jonathan Van Ness, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I just love him, and I love watching him, whether that's from Queer Eye, or on YouTube, or on Skillshare. Um, I always feel like when I watch him I just get like a free therapy session, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, just recently I've been feeling a little bit stagnant, a little bit stale, um, and I do feel like learning something new is a really great way to kind of combat those feelings. And yeah, I walked away from that class with some ideas on how to take some better care of myself so that I can show up better in the world around me and for people like my friends and family. Yeah, I definitely really enjoyed that class and it's one that I would recommend checking out if you're interested. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. So thank you Skillshare and let's get started with the sewing. First I started by drawing out my design and making some notes which I then transferred to the pattern pieces. I used a tutorial for how to add a puff to the sleeve cap, which I'll link here if you're interested.
Normally I don't like taking the time to make a muslin, but this time I decided it was a good idea and in the end I'm glad I did because I needed to adjust the sleeve a few times to get it right. Once I was happy with the muslin, it was time to start cutting out the real fabric. At first I straight stitched the seams, serged the seam allowances together to finish them, and then top stitched the seam allowances down. But in the end I didn't like how that looked, so I tried a few other ways on scrap fabric to see what worked best. In the end I decided to skip the serging altogether and just top stitch the seams, which did leave a raw edge. However, I felt like this was okay because I won't be wearing or washing this dress very often, and the fabric actually wasn't fraying that much while I was working with it. Um, I don't like leaving unfinished edges, but I felt like on this project it was the right call. For the front bodice panel, I did a simple rolled hem along the top, and then did four parallel rows of basting stitches so I could gather it. Once I had the gathering how I wanted it, I stitched over the basting stitches with a regular stitch to keep it in place before attaching it to the rest of the bodice. I gathered the sleeve cap between the notches and then pinned it to the bodice. I adjusted the gathering after it was pinned to make sure it fit well before stitching the two pieces together. With the bodice out of the way, it was time to move on to the skirt. I cut two meter long pieces that were the full width of the fabric so that I could gather them and have a really full skirt. I also cut two pockets out of some of the scraps. It was more work, but I just can't have a dress without pockets. I attached the pockets using my regular inseam pockets method, which I'll link in the description box below. Then it was time to gather the top of the skirt and attach it to the bodice. When I'm done gathering, I like to secure the long threads by wrapping them in a figure eight around a pin. To finish it off, I did a nice wide hem to replicate the one on the original dress, and then the main part of the dress was finished. The last thing to do was add some final details like the additional side skirt panels and some gathered details around the sleeve hem. To do that, I cut my remaining fabric into quarters so that I could make four additional panels. I gathered and hemmed them and then attached them to the dress at the sides, leaving an opening for the pocket. With my final pieces of scrap fabric, I cut two strips and gathered them in the middle, then attached them to the sleeve. 
And finally, my dress was finished. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, the dress is finally finished. It actually took me a lot longer than I was expecting. Um, I think I kind of lost steam a little bit towards the end. I was getting a little bit discouraged, kind of feeling like it wasn't really turning out exactly how I was envisioning it. Um, and yeah, I just really had to endeavor to get it finished. Um, but actually once I tried it on, I didn't feel too badly about it. I think maybe I did like a moderate job. Um, I was definitely cutting some corners. Um, obviously the designer of the original dress, Molly Goddard, who is a designer out of the UK, I believe, um, is extremely talented and I can't imagine how much time and effort goes into making one of her actual dresses um, because this was definitely extremely labor intensive. There was so much gathering. I don't like doing gathering, so I don't know why I do this to myself. But yeah, in the end, I do think it turned out kind of cute. Um, definitely not something that I would wear to like a Sunday brunch or to go run an errand and get some groceries. Um, but yeah, like I said, for like a Halloween costume, I think that this is great. Um, just for something fun and to learn some new skills. One of the new skills that I did learn while doing this dress was how to edit the pattern to make a puff sleeve cap, um, which is what I did here. So. Yeah, it's always good to learn something new. I hope you guys learned something new as well, whether that's how to do something or maybe how not to do something. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me in the future in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.